the numbers are rolling. You've been warned. Okay? You've been warned. All right? Uh, I don't know what the actual title of this is going to be, but you're going to see the name Bart D. Ehrman in this. And, and, and this, 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 this guy uh, is pond scum. This, this devil is scum. Wicked, vile, vomitous, dung. Okay? This, this, this putrid. Okay? Abhorrent. Vomitous. I already said that. Scum. Bart D. Ehrman. You, you brethren have been warned. Okay? Alright? This, this people, this guy that we are going to be addressing is the epitome of religious education, of the cemeterian, of Christianity today. But yet this guy doesn't call himself a Christian. Okay? We're, we're going to get into that. We're going to go after this jerk hardcore today. But please, okay, please, get your authorized version of the scriptures the perfect inerrant given by inspiration word of God preserved perfectly in English okay go ahead and get it all right and, and see this, this, this guy Bart okay? <laughs> use your imagination to what that uh, rhymes with okay He's a textual critic. And we're going to look into this guy. Okay. Uh, this, this guy. <laughs> all right. I think this guy's Jesuit. I really do. He got all the earmarks. But anyway. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. Okay. Matthew chapter 23. Okay. Hey. Hey, Bart. Doctor. You're going to hell, boy. And praise the Lord for his judgment against wicked devils like you. Hey, Bart. You see this? Mr. Scala, Mr. Jesuit trained, yea, half God said, devil. Tell me, when did the New Testament begin? <laughs> anyway, anyway. Yeah, this, this guy, Bart D. Ehrman, or however you, I don't care. Okay. This guy, I hate to say this, but truth is truth. This guy is worse than a fake gracer. At least, not, not all, at least fake gracers give the facade and the credence to truth in a way that Jesus Christ is God, which God, you know, right? Because most of them are Trinitarians. Okay, whatever, but... At least they have that semblance, that facade. This guy, and I, I hate saying that, okay? The Black Poolian bloke is actually better than this guy, and I despise saying that, even though they both work for the same company, okay? I despise saying that, okay? This guy, this Bart D. Ehrman, like I said, is the epitome of this thing. He went to uh, several cemetery schools, and he comes out with, yea, hath God said. He denies that Jesus is the Christ, okay? All right? But it's guys like this. It's guys like this that you lost people see, okay? Number one, Christianity is a joke. Christianity is not the faith that was once delivered on to the saints. But you, you come across the guy like this, okay, who's eloquent, who has the credentials and stuff like that, okay, and just destroys people's faith if ever there was any, okay? 
this guy is dangerous. This guy is the worst. Okay, not the worst ever that I've ever seen, uh, but th this guy is in a classification of his own. He is one of the worst of the worst. Okay, because... You see, you see, you people have been trained by the Jesuits. Meaning that in order for you to believe something, you have to visually see something. Or know that somebody has like a $100,000 piece of paper on their wall. Okay? That is Catholic. That is Jesuit. Okay? Alright? The Pharisees and Sadducees took knowledge of Peter and James and John and them guys. Why? Because they had been with Jesus. Okay? Jesus was in them. Okay? This guy. This guy. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. Matthew chapter 23. Question number one. Has Christ Jesus died, buried, and rose again the third day according to the scriptures yet? No. No. So what does that mean? Doctrinally, it was still under the law. Okay, we, we've talked about it. There will be a lot of links for you in the description box for you to consider. If you don't want to watch them or consider them, then shut up. Roll you up another one and go, go do what you're going to do. Okay? But Matthew chapter 23 is describing the spiritual climate before the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay? The time of Jacob's trouble. Who is, ja who is Jacob? Israel! Okay? All right? Matthew 23, verses 5 on verse 7. But all their works they do for it to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments. Look at me, got the suit and tie. I got the, I'm a scholar. <laughs> One guy down the road, you know, is... You know these, these scholar scholar uh, cemeterians. You know the guys that go to and are trained by Jesuits, uh, cemetery schools, seminary schools. Okay, these these guys are not that hard to trigger. <laughs> they, they really are not. Uh, they they they're, they're, you barely scratch them and they throw in your face. Well, I've been to this and I've I've done I've done. Don't do this. Don't do this. Okay. All right, I, I, I know how to handle myself, <laughs> okay? I don't fret me, but don't you do this, okay? When I have encountered a guy down the road there, you know, he's throwing in at me his, you know, his his education. I, I literally, I like, <laughs> I spit on the ground right in front. He didn't like that, and that's okay. I didn't care, okay? When, it comes to, when push comes to shove, I can be very combative, especially when it comes to truth, especially when I'm dealing with a Jesuit-trained cemeterian in mano y mano, okay? Don't, brother, don't, don't do that. Don't, don't do that, okay? You got to remember, people, when you encounter a Jesuit-trained cemeterian, the impossible is possible with God. Yes, it is. It is. But see, someone who has their brain so warped to thinking that they are their own standard, like Jesuit James White, like Jesuit James White, uh, uh, John MacArthur, okay, these atheists, they are their own gods, they are their own standard, okay? This, this guy, there's this channel called, um, that I know about, J, uh, trusting JC, okay, who is virtually the same thing, okay? This guy, Bart D. Ehrman, does not deny that, there, that Jesus Christ was an actual person, okay? He doesn't deny that there, that died on the cross. What he denies is that he's God, okay? All right, but let, let, let's continue. Let's continue. Verse 6. And love the uppermost rooms at feasts, and the chief seats in the synagogues, and greetings in the markets, to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi, like being a big shot. You know, with the visual eye candy of standing behind a, a plethora of books. Okay, and, okay, that's where you're standing, that's where you're standing. But you know, brethren, people, you got to remember, okay, with the devil, 
It's all about visual stimuli. It's about the eye candy. Okay? It, it, it um, subliminally gives to you that if you got someone standing in front of a whole thing of books, it subliminally puts off to you intelligence. Because, hey, here's a guy standing in front of books. Okay? It's a subliminal thing. Now, whether or not they're doing that intentionally, <laughs> or not, or not, that is what is being conveyed. Look at me. Look at me. Hey, hey, look at me. I, I'm, I'm in front of books. So that means I got intelligence. That means I got, you got to believe me, right? Right? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But they love to be called rabbi, rabbi. And as we're going to see about this idiot, um, he, he went to some uh, pretty uh, lucrative places. Okay. And while we are in Matthew chapter 23, well, let's look at verses 13 on to verse 15, okay? But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven, the actual physical, literal kingdom, in Jerusalem, okay? There's a difference between the kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven, Okay? But woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye shut up the kingdom of heaven against men. For ye neither go in yourselves, neither suffer ye them that are entering to go in. Ah. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye devour widows' houses, and for a pretense make long prayer. Therefore ye shall receive the greater damnation. Hail Mary, full of grapes, blessed be the fruit of the loom. That kind of thing. Okay? Widow's houses. The thing about what Jesuits do. Okay? The, uh, the audio book, uh, the Secreta Monita, shall be in the description box. If you don't like uh, me reading it, uh, Brother Alexander B. Hartley, check out his channel. He's also done it a lot, a lot more uh, thoroughly. Okay, very, very well done. Okay, <laughs> all right, let's continue. Woe unto you, scribes and Pharisees, hypocrites! For ye can pass sea and land to make one proselyte. And when he is made, ye make him twofold more the child of hell than yourselves. Like I was saying, okay, somebody who is searching for the actual Jesus Christ, who is, come across a putz like this, it's going to get shot down. Going to be shot down. These guys are dangerous. These types of guys. Okay? These guys are more dangerous than, I, I believe, than the fake gracers. The fake gracers can worm in on a personal level. But see, mankind, especially in America, society has been trained that if someone's got their credentials, got the look, got the, you know, the things, they've been to college, they are trained, you are trained that that is what you are to look to, okay? And the scriptures about our Lord Jesus Christ says that there was no beauty that they should behold him. The Jesus Christ who is, is contrary to man. The Jesus Christ who is, is contrary to flesh and to the establishment of Rome. Okay? It's a facade, people. It's a facade. But Matthew, and, and here's an argument of these people, of guys like this. Okay? <laughs> of course, Matthew chapter 5, and this is, we're not going to hear anything. I'm going to show you the, this guy's channel. We're going to look at him a little, and then we're going to, you know, dismantle him as we go. Okay? The scriptures are. Okay, but here's the argument of these people who want to call Paul a false prophet. Here's what these guys do. They surprise, surprise. They go to the sermon on the mount. The sermon on the mount. Beautiful for instruction in righteousness. 
Doctrine for today? Salvific for today? No! No! No. And a Jesuit trained, educated scholar ought to know that. But he's, yea, have God said, because he is his own standard. But these guys come to Matthew chapter 5, and they, uh, they, 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 they do this. This guy is basically a Judaizer. Kind of like Mark the Messenger, but a little bit more refined. Okay? Matthew Ch <laughs> This isn't funny. It's, it's laughable. Here's a guy who's been trained. He's been to Princeton and Moody. Brad, those aren't just... We'll, we'll, we'll deal with that later. Okay? But here's a guy who been trained, right? You know, textual critic, yeah. Here's someone who ought to know, but he doesn't, hopefully. I think he's a Jesuit. Matthew 5, verses 17 on verse 20. Think not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am not come to destroy, but to fulfill. To fulfill. Okay? See, the law is what you guys who don't get caught up, who don't go to the judgment seat of Christ, which is for the saints. You know, at the great white throne, the sword that comes out of his mouth, the scriptures, the law is what you're going to be judged according to in scripture. This is the standard that you people at the great white throne are going to be judged by. Okay? All right? <clears throat> but he came to fulfill. See, today, you don't keep the law to be saved or be right with God. You couldn't do that if you tried. We're, we're going to touch on the scriptures. We're going to prove to you, scripture is going to prove to you that you don't do that today. It's called rightly dividing the word of truth. Be dispensational. Okay? The New Testament began with the death of the testator. You get an idiot like this saying you got to keep the law today. And he said in a video, I only listened to a minute of it, and then I turned it off because right away, it's like Jesus said you got to keep the commandments. Ugh. While Jesus was here on the earth, his first appearance it was under the law. The law was binding. He was offering the kingdom of heaven onto the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? And the fulfillment of the law was what? The death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? The blood shed on the cross for the remission of sins. Okay? All right? Let's see. This is a guy who is educated beyond his own intelligence. Okay? Let's keep reading. For verily I say unto you, Till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle, those are synonymous with uh, Hebraic, uh, whatever it is, whatever they call that uh, writing of theirs. Till heaven and earth pass away, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. What was fulfilled in the law? Why aren't we, all, why aren't we sacrificing animals today? Why? Yeah, you want to be, hey, hey, Mr. Bart. Yeah, you say, hey, we got to keep the commandments. Mr. Mark the Messenger, hey, why, aren't we, why aren't we sacrificing animals today? I've asked Hasidim that. And I've encountered a couple of Hebraic Jews who have been like, ooh, that's so like passe. You know, we have you know, didn't say this word for word, but... Hinted, well, we've evolved from that crudeness. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Don't think we can talk, okay? What, 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 could, what could be said to you? <laughs> okay? Verse 19. 
Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments and shall teach men so, he shall be called the least in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is the actual physical literal kingdom in Jerusalem where our Lord Jesus Christ will be ruling and railing, raid, raining, ruling and reigning on the throne as king. Okay, is that happening now? No. No. Okay? But whosoever shall do and teach them, the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. For I say unto you, that except your righteousness shall exceed the righteousness of the scribes and Pharisees, ye shall in no case enter into the kingdom of heaven. And the kingdom of heaven is all works. Okay? See, salvation changes within the dispensation. We are not made right today with God or saved today the way you were under the law. This guy intentionally is telling people that you got to keep the law. Okay? He's a Judaizer. Okay? A lot more refined than Mark the Messenger. This, this guy's scum. This guy is scum. Okay? He is our enemy. And he is to be hated with perfect hatred. Why? Because he hates our Lord. Okay? I know a lot of you brethren have a problem with that. Check this dude out. I mean, well, we will. Okay? But now, go to Hebrews chapter 10. Hebrews chapter 10. Okay? Oh, by the way, we're going to be reading some scripture today. Got a problem with that? Good. Listen up. Hebrews 10, verses 1 on to verse 14. For the law having a shadow of good things to come, and not the very image of the thing, can never with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually make the comers thereon to perfect. But the blood of God, the sinless blood of God, okay? And, and, and see, Jake the Jerk, again, the reason why that sinful flesh was uh, precious and perfect because God manifest in flesh, never sinned. That's, that sinful flesh was sanctified because of that. You little jerk. Okay, let's continue. For then would they not have ceased to be offered. Because that the worshippers once purged should have no more conscience of sins. But in those sacrifices there is a remembrance again made of sins every year. For it is not it is not possible that the blood of bulls and of goats should take away sins. Yet they covered sin. Covered it. The blood of Jesus Christ on the cross cleanseth it. Takes it away. Okay? Wherefore, when he cometh into the world, he saith, Sacrifice and offering thou wouldest not. But a body hast thou prepared me. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? God was manifest in the flesh. Okay? God became flesh. Flesh did not become God. That, that's a problem with a lot of you Christians. Okay? In burnt offering and sacrifices for sin, thou had, hast had no pleasure. Then said I, Lo, I come in the volume of the book it is written of me to do thy will, O God. Above when he said, Sacrifice and offering and burnt offerings and offering for sin thou wouldest not, neither hadst pleasure therein which are offered by the law. Then said he, Lo, I come to do thy will, O God. He taketh away the first, that he may establish the second. Right there! That's actually, that's to refute this half-wit idiot, uh, Bart Ehrman, er woman. <coughs> I warned you, brethren. That's really all we need to do. To refute this twit, but we're gonna we're we're gonna we're gonna drive it home today. So let's continue. 
by the which will we are sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. And every priest standeth daily ministering and offering oftentimes the same sacrifices which can never take away sins. Yes, the, the uh, blood of animals covered. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanseth it away. Okay? But this man, after he had one, offered one sacrifice for sins, the fulfillment of the law, okay? But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, sat down on the right hand of God, from henceforth, expecting till his enemies, like Mr. Bart D. Ehrman, uh, from henceforth, expecting till his enemies be made his footstool. For by one offering he hath perfected forever them that are sanctified. Okay. John chapter 7. John chapter 7. Now, I want to got to make this point. You don't want you you don't need to go to a, a college. You don't need that kind of stuff in order to believe the scriptures. Evidence shows that when these people go to these cemetery schools, they come out, yea, hath God said, and doubting the true Christ who is. And then, you know, and the, the, the thing about the Bibles and whatnot. This, this is the scriptures, okay? The yea hath God said, the oldest and the best, the, the Greek, which one? Okay, <laughs> which one? The definitive, which one? Which number of the Nestle-Alan? Which number of the Texas Receptus? Which one? Okay? All right? This is what cemetery schools do to people. Even Smiley Dave at Chip Publications gives credence to that. That cemetery schools, you know, okay, yeah, maybe they, at their inceptions they have a good idea. But see, the Jesuits, the Jesuits who infiltrate, control all, okay? They control education in America, okay? They control the cemetery schools. Even the ones that are not openly Catholic or Jesuit, like Moody. <laughs> Moody. Like, yeah, you are Moody, ain't you? Or Princeton Theological Cemetery School. Okay, they are not openly Jesuit. But the Jesuits control it. Okay? You're a fool, says in your heart, if, it says in your heart there is no God. You're a fool. If you think that the Jesuit order has not infiltrated all that is religion in America, you're a fool. You're an absolute fool. You are your own God. Okay? And you're willfully ignorant. We won't go off on that. Okay? But John chapter 7, verses 15 on to verse 18. This, this is full of wonder. Okay? Again, these guys, the Pharisees and Sadducees, the scribes, they ought to have known who they were dealing with. Someone who spent thousands of dollars at these cemetery schools and got a Master of Divinity Catholic title, okay, ought to know that. And see, he does. See, when you run into, and that's the thing you guys got to remember, when you run, come across somebody like this, there has to be a working knowledge of actual truth in order to deceive in the way that he does. Okay? This man, like so many of these devils here on YouTube, they know what is actually true. They know. They have to know in order to be so adamant to teach contrary to it. Okay? That's why this guy is going to hell and the door is going to be shut. Amen, amen. Praise the Lord for his righteous judgment. Praise the Lord for his righteous judgment. But see, John chapter 7, verses 15 on verse 18. 
And the Jews marveled, saying, they're talking about the Father. How knoweth this man letters, having never learned? You don't, he doesn't have the credentials. He hasn't been to a college. He hasn't. How do you know? Okay, I can read Koine Greek and scriptural Hebrew. Okay, the old is, yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can't tell me when the New Testament began. Huh? And you don't believe in the redemption of the purchased possession. You believe in one God and three persons. Huh? You don't believe in eternal security. Okay? You're the educated one. And you can't, and the begats thee thou thine. <laughs> and the Jews marveled, saying, How know this man letters, having never learned? Jesus answered them, and said, My doctrine is not mine, but his that sent me. If any man will do his will, he shall know the doctrine, whether it be of God or whether it, I speak of myself. He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory. Oh, like Mr. Ehrman, like Jesuit James White, like John MacArthur, and, you know, like uh, Ray Comfort, and like Paul Washer, these educated people. Now look, let's, let's finish the verse, okay? He that speaketh of himself seeketh his own glory, but he that seeketh his glory that sent him, the same is true, and no unrighteousness is in him. Now these guys seek the glory of Satan. But now, see, for example, you don't want a guy who's a mechanic to be also a heart surgeon. Okay? <laughs> there is a place for this kind of thing, for being, for educated, for being education or whatever. Okay? You want someone who's going to do a heart transplant to have a working knowledge of, <laughs> of what vein to clip. Okay? not talking about you know disregarding that at all what i'm talking about is these guys they go to the cemetery schools get trained by jesuits come out saying yea have god said and are destroying people promoting ye shall be as gods knowing good and evil worse worse than the fake gracers Worse than they are, because these guys come out with the, the facade, the paper on the wall, and they proclaim it. And, you know, like I said, these guys are very easy to trigger. <laughs> they are. I've been there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, don't, don't, don't do that. Don't. Don't. All right. Don't do that. Don't do as I have done. Okay. Now. Let's go, while we're in John chapter 7, let's go to verses 45 on to verse 53. 45 on to verse 53. Then came, then came the officers to the chief priests and Pharisees, and they said unto them, Why have ye not brought him? The officers answered, Never man spake like this man. Look at the reaction of the educated scholars of the Pharisees. Look at them. Look at that. Then answered that then answered them the Pharisees, Are ye also deceived? You peon. What do you you haven't been to college? You what do you know? Have any of the rulers or the Pharisees believed on him? Have any of the upper echelon, huh? Have any of the scholars, huh? Believed on him? Yea, as God said, ye shall be as gods. Yeah. You will be like the most high. Yeah. But this people who knoweth not the law are cursed. Let that ruminate in the head a little bit. You, I, Robert Breaker has done this in several of his videos, apparently. Where he has this condescending thing. It's like, well, you're just too stupid. You don't know what you're talking about. Brad, you've done the same thing too. Against devils. Yes. Like Christy Burke. Okay. This idiot. Yes. Yes. These are our enemies. Okay. Yes. But these guys, you know, because they've got the 
education. They got the degrees. They've been to this. They spent a hundred thousand dollars. You don't know what you're talking about. All the while saying, yea, hath God said, and don't believe on the Jesus Christ who is. Okay? Nicodemus saith unto them, he that came to Jesus by night being one of them. Poor Nicodemus. I believe Nicodemus is in heaven. I really do. But he has been branded with that stigma. Like um, um, Jeroboam, the son of Nebat, who made Israel to sin. If I got that wrong, someone correct me. But he, that guy was branded with the stigma of he made Israel to sin. Poor Nicodemus is branded with a stigma that he went to Jesus by night because he was afraid to go to him openly, uh, but, so he had to do it undercover by night. Okay, poor Nicodemus. I believe Nicodemus is in heaven. I do. But he, he's, he's, he's branded with that. He, went to, he was ashamed. He was afraid. He didn't want to have other people. It's like, you went to see this guy? Okay? Like I said, I, I, I do. Sweet, lovable Nicodemus. Okay? I, I believe he's in heaven. But again, he's branded with that stigma, unfortunately. Doth our law judge any man before it heareth him and know what he doeth? Look at how they respond to one of their own. They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? What are you? Are you one of them? The accusation right there. <laughs> See, these guys turn on themselves. It's like when two devils put on the uh, pageant play that they're fighting against each other. Okay? It's like you guys are, it's, you guys are just putting on a performance, a bad performance. Okay? Just give me a break. They answered and said unto him, Art thou also of Galilee? Search and look. For out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And as we covered in the previous video, is it not evident that our Lord sprang from Judah and that uh, Moses gave no mention of someone coming out of Judah to be a priest? Actually, we might be covering that again today. We are, so never mind. Okay. Search and look. For out of Galilee ariseth no prophet. And every man went unto his own house. Okay? Micah chapter 3. You know, I was wondering, I, I mentioned to a brother yesterday about, you know, uh, Micah chapter 3. Um, and it's like, okay, what do you want me to do with this? What, what am I going to do with this, Lord? What do you want done? Now I know. The scribes and the Pharisees should have known, like the rich young ruler, should have had eyes to see that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. The Word made flesh. God the Father, the Mashiach, is right there. Didn't have eyes to see. Why? Because they can only see themselves in the mirror. They are their own God. But see, they ought to have known. Someone who has gone to a supposed godly, which one? <laughs> Little G God of this world. Uh, ought to know simple stuff. He does. But he's purposely deceiving people and destroying people's faith if they ever had any. And turn the faith that man is supposed to have on the Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, and turn it back to number one. Micah chapter 3. And I said, Here, I pray you, O heads of Jacob and princes of the house of Israel, is it not for you to know judgment? What happens with these guys that come out of the cemetery schools? Go to a church building, talk to you about tithing. Tithing is not a requirement today. The, the, the buildings are not the houses of God. We, the body, we. God dwells in us. Your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Okay? Who hate the good. There is none good but who? God. And love the evil. Call evil good and, and good evil. Who pluck off their skin from off them, and, and their flesh from off their bones. Who also eat the flesh of my people, and flay their skin from off them. And they break their bones, and chop them in pieces, as for the pot, as flesh in the cauldron. Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. Lord, Lord, 
Have we not done this, that, and the other thing? I never knew you. Okay? Then shall they cry unto the Lord, but he will not hear them. He will even hide his face from them at that time, as they have behaved themselves ill in their doings. Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry, Peace! And he that putteth into their mouths, they even prepare war against him. Therefore night shall be unto you, that ye shall not have a vision. And it shall be dark unto you, that ye shall not divine. And the sun, S-U-N, shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. Then shall the seers be ashamed, and the diviners confounded. Yea, they shall all cover their lips. For there is no answer of God. Capital G. But oh, who's answering the prayers? The little G God, Satan. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. Lord says, imparted. This is under the law. We're looking at this for instruction in righteousness. Okay? And of judgment and of might to declare unto Jacob his transgression and to Israel his sin. Hear this, I pray you. Ye heads of the house of Jacob and princes of the house of Israel that abhor judgment and pervert all equity. Christians, Christianity, guys like this, okay? Scholar. They build up Zion with blood and Jerusalem with iniquity. The heads thereof judge for reward. Got to pay to play in your church building, right? Got to buy that book, right? That commentary, right? And the priests thereof teach for hire. And the prophets thereof divine for money. Yet, yet, okay, they do all these things contrary. Okay? Yet, Will they lean upon the Lord and say, Is not the Lord among us? Then evil can come upon us. Talk about just as if I. They do what is contrary, right there in verse 11, and then they try to, well, hey, the Lord wants this, okay? God wants you to be happy. God loves you unconditionally. Or in the case of this guy, Jesus wasn't the Messiah. Paul's a false prophet. you got to keep the commandments. Okay? And this guy, Bart D. Ehrman, if he survives, you know, <laughs> he'd be the one who'd say to you people who get left behind when that man of sin, the son of perdition, comes around. He's one of the guys who's going to say, hey, there's the Mashiach that Israel has been waiting for. Therefore shall Zion for your sake be plowed as a field, and Jerusalem shall become heaps, and the mountain of the house of, of as the high places of the forest. Ezra, Ezra, chapter 4, Ezra chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5, okay? Ezra chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. Come on, fingers were there. We go. <sighs> now, when the adversaries of Judah and Benjamin heard that the children of the captivity builded the temple unto the Lord God of Israel, the body of Christ, the saints, the Church of the Living God, out there. Uh, being a uh, testimony unto the lost. You get some educated, Jesuit-trained, cemeterian scholar, scumbag, coming along. Infiltration, like so many people do. Then they came to Zerubbabel, and to the chief, and to the chief of the fathers, and said unto them, Let us build with you. For we seek your God as ye do. 
and we do sacrifice unto him since the days of Azarhaddon, king of Assur, which brought us up. And this is a reference unto, I believe, 2 Kings chapter 17. Okay? Go ahead and check that out on your own time. But Zerubbabel and Jeshua and the rest of the chief of the fathers of Israel said unto them, ye have nothing to do with us to build a house unto our God. Different dispensation. They were building, they were starting to build the actual second temple, not the third one. Okay? You have nothing to do with us. This guy, Bart D. Ehrman, is not saved. He's not, he doesn't call himself a Christian. Okay? He's a Judaizer. He's trying to put people under the law. Okay? He's a Satanist. All right? But we ourselves together will build unto the Lord God of Israel as King Cyrus the king of Persia hath commanded us. And what happens, like we discussed in the previous video, what happens when these guys, for example, say, well, I believe, and then they justify, they justify, and they justify, and then when the Lord puts the finger on that one thing they lack, they turn and attack you. Okay? All right? Then the people of the land <laughs> weakened the hands of the people of Judah and troubled them in building and hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of Cyrus, king of Persia, even until the reign of Darius, king of Persia. Hmm. See, guys like this and we're about to see this, guys, so don't worry. I had to get this stuff out first, okay? Guys like Bart D. Ehrman, this is Romans chapter 1, which he denies because he calls Paul a false prophet, okay? He's telling people that he's like, well, Jesus, he doesn't deny that Jesus existed. But he's saying that Jesus said that you got to keep the law. When he came here first, the law was still binding. He was offering the kingdom of heaven onto the Hebraic Jewish people. Okay? We've, there will be a lot of links for you where we answer this question. We answer this. Okay? All right? But this, this Bart D. Ehrman, okay, he is the epitome of Romans chapter 1, verses 21 under verse 25. Scholar. Because that when they knew God, just a, just a mental, they, it didn't go from that lump three foot above their buttocks, the 18 inches down to their heart, okay? Because that when they knew God, they glorified him not as God, but because that when they knew God mentally, not here as relational, they glorified him not as God, neither were thankful, but became vain in their imaginations, and their foolish heart was darkened professing themselves to be wise, they became fools. Fool says in his heart there is no God. Atheists. This clown. Okay? And changed the glory of the uncorruptible God into an image made like to corruptible man. Man is made, I uh, mentioned first, it's all about flesh, it's all about the visual stimuli. Okay? And to birds and four-footed beasts and creeping things. Hey, you want to believe your own God, your own standard? Huh? You want sin? Hey! Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanness through the lust of their own hearts, to dishonor their own bodies between themselves, who changed the truth of God into a lie, worshipped and served the creature more than the Creator, who is blessed forever. Amen. Okay? Now, let, let's let's get a look at this pond scum. All right, let's go. Let's get a look at this guy. All right. <laughs> now you're my uh, Brad, but that we're not we're not even going to. Okay, we're not this. <laughs> the atheist Emma Thorne. Okay, why why does a woman want to look like a man? Why does a man want to look like a woman? All who do such are an abomination to the Lord. Okay, this, okay, uh, we're not even going to concentrate on this, this 
sodomite, okay? Uh, but Miss Emma Thorne, if you by chance happen to see this, come here. You're a liar. You're not an atheist. You do believe in a God. Yourself. Shut up. But I wouldn't wait, but I'm not even going to waste time with this. She looks like a guy. Whatever. Whatever. But why are we here? I want to show you something. Okay, and now we'll play here. Bart. Okay? Look at that. And that's the one I saw. This. Did Paul and Jesus have the same religion? Just like stupid head, Christy Burt, which will be in the description box for you, okay, stupid head, the same thing. This educated scholar, textual critic, who is his own standard, he's doing the same thing. Jesus and Paul, their teachings seem to contradict. It's called rightly dividing the word of truth. Okay? Being dispensational. While Jesus Christ was on the earth at his first coming, the law was still binding. He was offering the physical, literal kingdom of heaven unto the Hebraic Jewish people. It was prophesied that he was going to go to the cross, die, bury, and rise again the third day according to the scriptures, and shed his blood for the remission of sins on the cross, fulfilling the law. Okay? And his death brought in the New Testament. The way man was made right with God under the law is not the way we are made right, saved with God today. So that gives off the appearance that, that they were speaking two different things because they were. Why? Because the dispensation changed. You have to rightly divide the word of truth or you become idiots like this guy. But here's what's interesting. Here's this guy. Look at this pond scum. Comes to the end. I got to tell you about this Emma Thorne. She uh, attacked Kent Helvin, who's also a Jesuit, about how he's like marrying multiple women and stuff like that. She, I actually, that's how I've heard of her. Because she went after Kent Helvin. And bravo. Hey, Emma. Go after Christians all day. Go right ahead. Go right, hey, there's this guy named Dade Murphy. He's a little grotesque and offensive, but he's like you, okay? <laughs> but go after Christians all day long. But when you start trying to go after the God who is my father, then I take issue, but I'm not even going to waste time with you. But here's this, here's this guy coming to this little girl here, and look at this. Look at this guy. Look at this guy. Hey, okay, see? Hmm. Can two walk together unless they be agreed? See, Emma there is her own God. This uh, Bart D. Ehrman is his own God. Okay? That's why they can get along. But now, let's, uh, let's, let's go. For this, this guy has a channel. <laughs> okay? Bart uh, Ehrman. There he is. I'm going to put the link. I'm also going to name him in the title of this and the link for this thing. Okay. Look, 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 look at this guy. Look at this guy. And thankfully, he's not blabbing. Bart D. Ehrman. Here he is. He is a Judaizer. Okay. He is a Judaizer. He says that, you know, he and he brings up the argument about Matthew chapter 5 about the fulfillment of the law. And, and look at some of his stuff here. Look at some of his stuff. Misquoting Jesus, okay, in the Bible. <laughs> okay. All right. Here's his debates, interviews, videos, and proof Jesus was an illusionist. Okay. Did the resurrection of Jesus really happen? He, did, he says no. Okay. I mean, this guy is, this guy is a devil. But here he is, okay, and here is, a, and what's his most popular video? Misquoting Jesus. And see, someone who is searching 200, 2 million views, okay, all right? 
Jesus the law and the new covenant. How Jesus became God. <laughs> and see, someone who may be searching for the Jesus who is encounters a guy like this. You're, you're, you're dead in the water. You're dead in the water. Okay? Hey, Bart! You're scum, pal! You're scum. You have time. If you're alive, you have time to repent. But see, you're one of these guys who have gone past the point of no. The impossible is possible with God. But you are your own God. You deny that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. You don't deny that he was a real person. But you deny that he's God. How he became God. Let's learn a little something something about this guy, shall we? Okay, we're done with that. Here is the Wikipedia on this nitwit. Okay, now, now, let's see. He, he went to, yeah, if you're that curious, you can look. Okay, where, where is it? Okay, uh, where, there it is. Ehrman was raised in the Episcopal Church as a teenager. He became a born-again evangelical in misquoting Jesus. He recounts being certain in his youthful enthusiasm that God had inspired the wording of the Bible and protects its texts from all error. <laughs> Which one? Which one? Yeah. His desire to understand the original words of the Bible led him to study ancient languages, particularly Koine Greek and textual criticism. Yea, hath God said. Which one? Which one? Which edition of the Nestle Alon? Bart? Hmm? You wouldn't even mess with the Texas Receptus. There's 19 of those. Huh? Filth. Filth! Okay? Alright. During such studies at Princeton Theological Seminary, however, he became convinced that there were contradictions and discrepancies in the biblical manuscripts not to be harmonized or reconciled. Okay? All right, uh, that was not... Okay, there it is. It's above. It was above that. On October 5th, 1955, Ehrman was unfortunately born in Lawrence, Kansas. I'm sorry. That, that, that you, and, you wanted him here for whatever reason. I'm sorry. That was, that was wrong. I'm sorry. And subsequently grew up there before attending Lawrence High School. And he was on the state champion debate team in 1973. He began studying the Bible, biblical theology, and biblical languages at Moody Bible Institute. Now, Moody is not openly Jesuit. But like I said, Jesuits have infiltrated. Okay? And I've talked to <laughs> Moody cemeterian people. They're, they're, they're crazy. Okay, they, they are all like this guy. Okay, this is what happens when you go to Jesuits to learn what God has said. You come out, you being your own standard. Okay? Where he earned, where he earned the school's three-year diploma in 1976, he earned his B.A. from Wheaton College in Illinois in 1978, he earned a MD, whatever that is, from Princeton Theological Seminary, one of the worst, in 1981, and a PhD in 1985, where he studied textual criticism of the Bible, yea, hath God said, development of New Testament canon and New Testament apocrypha, oh boy, and under Bruce Metzger, Jesuit, both the baccalaureate and doc, whatever that is, were confirmed magna cum laude, whatever. Okay? 
Now, Princeton and Moody are not openly jo Metzger, Jesuit. Okay, this this guy, this guy, I have no doubt is a Jesuit. And see, here's the thing you gotta remember about these Jesuits. Okay, you know, uh, Smiley Dave said about Jesuit James White. And see, Smiley Dave, Dave, you know, David Daniels, who I hope is okay, uh, he said that there was no evidence to support that Jesuit James White is a Jesuit. He ought to have known better. Okay? He ought to have known better. But from the thing here, uh, and you can find this in the um, About section, a link for not this actual one, but about the Jesuits' uh, secret oath. Let's read a little about what Jesuits do, okay? This guy, like I said, you, you saw his thing. He, uh, Princeton and Moody are not openly Jesuit. But here's what Jesuits do. Quote, My son, heretofore you have been taught to act the dissembler among Roman Catholics to be a Roman Catholic and to be a spy even among your own brethren, to believe no man, to trust no man. Oh, kind of like a black polian. Hmm. Among the reformers, to be a reformer. Among the Huguenots, to be a Huguenot. Among the Calvinists, to be a Calvinist. Among the Protestants, generally to be a Protestant, to infiltrate, to be a chameleon. Her ways are movable, that thou canst not know them. Today's the fifth. Okay? And uh, obtaining their confidence, infiltrating, brown nosing, love bombing, to seek even to preach from their pulpits and to denounce with all vehemence in your nature our holy religion and the Pope and even to descend to so low as to become a Jew among Jews. Yeah, uh, Jesuits, Catholics are the ultimate anti-Semitic. That you might be a be in it, that you might be enabled to gather together all information for the benefit of your order as a faithful soldier of the po of the Pope. Jesuits are information gatherers. Like record your conversations when you speak to them. Yeah. You have been taught, yea, hath God said, to insidiously plant the seeds of jealousy and hatred between communities, provinces, states that were at peace, and incite them to deeds of blood, involving them in war with each other, and to create revolutions and civil wars in countries that were independent and prosperous, cultivating the arts and the sciences and enjoying the blessings of peace to take sides with the combatants and to act secretly with your brother Jesuit who might be engaged on the other side but openly opposed to that which with which you might be connected only that the church might be the gainer in the end in the conditions fixed in the treaties for peace and that the end justifies the means. Two Jesuits on the either side pretending to be against each other. You see this all the time with these coadjutors pretending to be at odds with each other. Like Andy and the Black Poolian. They're working for the same people. Dear brother. Dear brother. What are you doing? What are you doing? Dear brother, stay away from these people. Don't waste your time. Anyway, let's continue. You have been taught your duty as a spy to gather all statistics. That's what these guys do. Facts and information in your power from every source to ingratiate yourself into the confidence of the family circle of protestants and heretics of every class and character. Yeah, uh, like uh, the hunter. He's like, it's absurd to think that the Jesuits would be involved in men. No. From, from the top to the bottom, the Jesuits infiltrate everything. 
Okay? The Jesuit will be in the seat of power and also pumping your gas at the gas station. Okay? Okay? There's no rock so low that you can't find a Jesuit under it. Okay? Just remember that. <clears throat> All right? To ingratiate yourself into the confidence of the family circle of Protestants and heretics of every class and character, as well as that of the merchant, the banker, the lawyer, among the schools and universities. The Jesuits have long infiltrated Princeton, Moody. They're run by Jesuits. No, they are not openly Jesuit, but they're run by Jesuits. This Bart D. Ehrman, he's a Jesuit coadjutor. Okay? He's a Jesuit. Jesuit coadjutor at the, at the least. A Jesuit at the predominant. Okay? <clears throat> In parliaments, government, and legislatures, and the judiciaries and councils of state, and to be all things to all men, for the Pope's sake, Atoro Sosa, whose servants we are unto death. That's why um, Jesuits will go down on a sinking ship like the Titanic, which I truly believe was sunk by the Jesuits. Come hell or high water, in one way or another, that ship, the Titanic, was going to go down. It just so happened that they encountered an ice field. You know, you look into the Titanic, there was a fire that buckled the paint uh, before it launched. One way or another, the Jesuits were going to sink that ship. Why? Because those who opposed the Jesuit Federal Reserve were on that ship. So that they had to go down. And hence what happened after that? The Jesuit Federal Reserve Bank in America, the Pope's own personal bank, was started. Okay? You have received all your instructions heretofore as a novice, a neophyte, and, a, and have served as coadjutor, confessor, and priest, but you have not yet been invested with all that is necessary to command in the army of Loyola in the service of the Pope. You must serve the proper time as the instrument and executioner, as directed by you, your superiors that none can command here who has not consecrated his labors with the blood of heretics, of the heretic, excuse me. For without the shedding of blood, no man can be saved. Sounds kind of familiar to the morons, Mormons, doesn't it? And as I understand in Utah, execution by firing squad for that very purpose is still applicable. Hmm, isn't that interesting? You will, in addition to your former oath of obedience, to order and allege to the Pope, repeat after me, and we're not going to read the actual extreme oath. You want a link? Uh, look in the uh, about section. Okay? That's what this uh, Bart D. Ehrman is. He's a Jesuit. Okay? Does he wear the collar? No, but that guy's a Jesuit. Absolutely. And what he's doing is, he's trying to bring people under the law. Okay? He denies, and see, this is where, with somebody like this, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, is applicable. Why? Because he, he's a prophet. He's claiming to speak for God. Okay? He does. He's claiming that Jesus isn't God. Okay? He's claiming to be a somebody. He's claiming that Jesus was not the Messiah. That Paul's a false prophet. Okay? Okay? It's like all these people, you know, these people who don't know the law are cursed. We already saw it. Okay? Alright? To bring you back under the collar of Rome. Acts chapter 15. Acts chapter 15. Verses 1 on to verse 11. Here's how you dismantle this idiot. Okay? Here's how, okay? Acts chapter 15. Okay? This dispensation. 
This dispensation began with the death of the testator. Okay? Rightly dividing the word of truth. Acts chapter 15, verses 1 under verse 11. Here is Mr. Ehrman, Bart. And certain men which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised, after the manner of Moses ye cannot be saved. Got to keep the law. Got to keep the commandments. When therefore Paul, who Mr. Ehrman says was a false prophet, when therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. And being brought on their way by the church, the body of Christ, not a building, okay, they passed through Phoenice, 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 okay, and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles. And they caused great joy in unto all the brethren. And when they were come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders. And they declared all things that God had done, by, done with them. But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, Pharisees' tradition, scripture, Catholic. Okay, that's what a Catholic is. Someone who puts their tradition above the scripture. Okay? But there rose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees which believed, which believed, thou believest there, uh, there's one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. Okay? They believed. Covered this in the previous video. Saying that it was needful to circumcise them and command them to keep the law of Moses. Bart. Mark the Messenger, Trusting JC, whatever that idiot's channel is, and countless other people out there. Okay? And the apostles and elders came together for to consider of this matter. And when there had been much disputing, Peter rose up and said unto them, Men and brethren, ye know how that a good while ago God made choice among us that the Gentiles by my mouth should hear the word of the gospel and believe. And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, and the Lord is that Spirit. One God, comprised of spirit, soul, and body, just like you and I are. The Lord Jesus Christ is that Spirit, who is God the Father, okay? And God, which knoweth the hearts, bear them witness, giving them the Holy Ghost, even as he did unto us. And put no difference between us and them, purifying their hearts by faith. Hey, Bart. Now therefore, why tempt ye God to put a yoke upon the neck of the disciples which neither our fathers nor we were able to bear? No one can keep the law perfectly. The law is there to show you your need for a Savior, that you are inept, that man at his best is vanity. But we believe that through the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ we shall be saved even as they. While we're here, go to in Acts 15, 24 on the 29. For as much as we have heard that certain when which, for as much as we have heard that certain which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your soul, saying, Ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. <laughs> First John chapter 2. Oh yeah, you know it, brother. First John chapter 2. The falling away, Mr. Fig. Verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were not all of us. Someone claiming to be saved, but that today you got to keep the law to be saved, stay saved, and be right with God, 
Today in this dispensation, they're a liar, they're a devil, they're a heretic. Nine times out of ten, serving the Vatican, working for the Jesuits. Let's read verse 24 in Acts 15 again. For as much as we have heard that certain when, which went out from us have troubled you with words, subverting your souls. Ah, subverting. That's, uh, that's, uh, never mind. Okay. Subverting your soul, saying ye must be circumcised and keep the law, to whom we gave no such commandment. What the Lord said before the death, death, burial, and resurrection was for another dispensation. It was under the law. Okay? It seemed good unto us, being assembled with one accord, to send chosen men unto you with our beloved Barnabas and Paul, men that have hazarded their lives for the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. We have sent therefore Judas and Silas, who shall also tell you the same things by mouth. For it seemed good to the Holy Ghost, and to us to lay upon you no greater burden than these necessary things, that ye abstain from meat offered to idols, oh, like Easter baskets, that was a good one, brother, and from blood, Catholic, and from things strangled, and from fornication, from which if ye keep yourselves, ye shall do well. Fare ye well. Okay? Galatians chapter 3, verses 19 on to 29. Galatians chapter 3, verses 19 on to 29. Is the law sin? God forbid. The law has been fulfilled in the sacrifice the death, burial, and resurrection, and the blood shed on the cross. Okay? Mr. Bart D. Ehrman denies that. He's a Satanist. He is a Catholic. <laughs> Secretly. Okay? Metzger, there's the Jesuit tie-in. Apocrypha, there's the Jesuit tie-in. Guy's a Jesuit. Galatians 3, 19 on to the close. Wherefore then serveth the law? It was added because of transgression. Transgressions, till the seed should come to whom the promise was made. And it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator. Now a mediator is not a mediator of one, but God is one. Is the law there is the law then against the promises of God? God forbid. For if there for if there had been a law given which could have given life, verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture, which, yeah, which one's the scripture there, Bart? But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ might be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up onto the faith which should afterward be, afterwards be revealed. Wherefore the law was our schoolmaster to bring us on to Christ, that we might be justified by faith. But after that faith has come, we are no longer under the school under a schoolmaster, meaning the law. We are under the law to Christ, which Paul talks about in Romans chapter 13. Okay? But as far as keeping the law, the Ten Commandments, we that's not a requirement for salvation today. You couldn't do it even if you tried. We just read what its purpose was for. Does that disannul it? No, because that is what uh, the people at the great white throne are going to be judged by. For ye are all children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many of you as for as many of you as have been baptized into Christ have put on Christ, identified with Christ. Okay, saved. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither bond nor free. There is neither male nor female. For ye are all one in Christ Jesus. This is talking about salvation. Obviously, there is a Greek and a Hebraic Jew. Obviously, no matter what these transgender twits want you to believe, there is a male and a female. There are only two genders. This is talking about salvifically. 
There is no distinction in salvation today. And if ye be Christ, then are ye Abraham's seed, and heirs according to the promise. See, like I said, this is where 1 John 4 comes into play with Mr. Bart D. Ehrman. Okay? He denies that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? He denies that Jesus is God. Okay? What happened? What changed? Ephesians 3, verses 1 and verse 7. For this cause I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles, if ye have heard of the, of the dispensation of the grace of God, which is given me to you, to you word, how that by revelation he made known unto me the mystery, as I wrote afore in few words, whereby when ye read, ye may understand my knowledge in the mystery of Christ, which in other ages was not made known unto the sons of men, as it is now revealed unto his holy apostles and prophets by the capitalist spirit, the Lord himself. That means that they were not looking forward to the cross in the Old Testament. Okay? That the Gentiles should be fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in, the, in Christ by the gospel. Whereof I was made a minister. He didn't make himself one. God chose Paul to replace Judas Iscariot. Okay? Wherefore I was made a minister according to the gift of the grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Hebrews 7. Hebrews 7. So what changed? The death, burial, and resurrection and bloodshed on the cross which brought in this dispensation in the New Testament. Salvation changes in the dispensation. We are not made right today like they were under the law during the patriarchal period, during the Garden of Eden. And these fake gracers says, say that it's by grace through faith from beginning to end. That's heresy. Okay? Mr. Bart Urban says that you got to keep the law today. Like Mark the Messenger and countless others. Hebrews 7, verses 11 on to verse 16. Hebrews 7, verses 11 on to verse 16. If therefore perfection were by the Levitical priesthood, for under it the people received the law, what further need was there that another priest should rise after the order of Melchizedek, not be called after the order of Aaron? For the priesthood being changed. Something changed. The death, burial, and resurrection brought in the New Testament. There is made of necessity a change also of the law. He fulfilled it with the death, burial, and resurrection and the bloodshed on the cross. For he of whom these things are spoken pertaineth to another tribe of which no man gave attendance at the altar. For it is evident that our Lord sprang out of Judah of which tribe Moses spake nothing concerning priesthood. And it is yet far more evident for that after the similitude of Melchizedek there ariseth another priest who is made not after the law of a carnal commandment but after the power of an endless life. 1 John 4 verses 1 on to verse 3 this is where this is applicable. Okay, Mr. Barty Ehrman is claiming himself to be a prophet speaking for God. And that, you know, we don't know what we're talking about. Saints, saved people. Beloved, believe not every spirit, lowercase s, but try the lowercase s spirits whether they are of God. Because many false prophets are gone out into the world like Barty Ehrman. See, prophets is the key to understanding this. This is, this is not a proof text like I used to teach in error, this is not a proof text where someone could say Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. That doesn't mean that they're saved. No. It's about those who are prophets. 
those who are claiming to speak for the Lord, like Bart D. Ehrman, he's claiming to speak for God. But he denies that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Hereby know ye the capital S Spirit of God, every lowercase s spirit that confesseth that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is of God. And every lowercase s spirit that confesseth not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh is not of God. And this is that lowercase s spirit of Antichrist, whereof ye have heard that it should come, and even now already is it in the world. Okay? Bart D. Ehrman denies that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. He denies that Jesus is God the Father. He denies Jesus is God. How he became God. Okay? D, what is that? Gnostic? Second John, 7 on to verse 11. For many deceivers are entered into the world who confess not that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. This is a deceiver and an antichrist. An antichrist. To be against and to replace. Look to yourselves that we lose not those things which we have wrought but that we receive a full reward. Whosoever transgresseth and abideth not in the doctrine of Christ hath not God. He that abideth in the doctrine of Christ, he hath both the Father and the Son. What does that mean? That means that Jesus is God the Father. And Mr. Bart Ehrman doesn't believe that Jesus is God. Okay? Not at all. If there come any unto you, and bring not this doctrine, receive him not into your house, neither bid him God's speed. For he that biddeth him God's speed is partaker of his evil deeds. Okay. Uh, third John, 9 unto 11. Scholar. I wrote unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence, among them receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I will remember his deeds which he doeth, prating against us with malicious words, and not content therewith. Neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. I slow down a little bit. 2 Peter chapter 2, and then we will be done. 2 Peter chapter 2, verses 17 on to verse 19. Mr. Bart D. Ehrman. These are wells without water. Clouds that are carried with the tempest, to whom the mist of darkness is reserved forever. For when they speak great swelling words of vanity, they allure through the lust of the flesh, through much wantonness, those that were clean escaped from them who live in error. While they pro promise them liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption, for of whom a man is overcome, of the same is he brought into bondage. Ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Brethren, that's going to be it, people. This is going to be it for this video. Guys like this are the worst, okay? And, you know, <laughs> this Bart guy is his own god. He's a devil. Uh, I believe he's a Jesuit, okay? You know, we've seen the Jesuit tie-ins with this guy. Um, these types of guys... You know, these, you know, these types of guys are dangerous. Watch out for them. Okay. So that's going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this if you do. Uh, there will be a lot of links for you in the description box. Thank you. I love you. We'll see you in the next video.